Hello everyone, it's Teacher Marky once again and welcome to another video lecture. Today's topic is about the different types of media. At the end of this video, you should be able to classify the representations of diverse media types, learn about the advantages and disadvantages of some media types, and define media convergence in its importance. Before we discuss the different types of media, let's take a step back and define what media is once again. The term media, which is the plural of medium, refers to the communication channels through which we disseminate news, music, movies, education, promotional messages, and other data. In today's world, media has become as necessary as food and clothing. It has played significant roles in strengthening the society. Media is considered as mirror of the modern society. In fact, it can be said that media shapes many aspects of our lives. The types of media are the different channels through which the information and entertainment reach an audience. Media often includes the content itself, as well as the physical device needed to transmit it, such as television programming and a television. We can divide media into three distinct categories, print media, broadcast media, and digital or new media. The first type is print media. Print media is one of the oldest and basic forms of mass communication consisting of paper and ink, reproduced in a printing process that is traditionally mechanical. The contribution of print media in providing information and transfer of knowledge is remarkable. Even after the advent of electronic media, the print media has not lost its charm or relevance. Print media has the advantage of making a longer impact on the minds of the reader. Here are some examples of print media. The first one is newspaper. A newspaper is a major source of information for a large number of readers. It may be national or local, daily or weekly, and it allows prompt delivery of detailed coverage of news and other information with interesting features for readers. There are two basic types of newspaper, which are broadsheet or a standard or full-sized newspaper that takes a serious look at major news stories, and tabloid, which is a smaller than standard newspaper which focuses on less serious content, especially celebrities, sports, and sensationalist crime stories. Next example of print media is magazine. A magazine is a specialized advertising media that serves educational, informational, entertainment, and other specialized needs of consumers, businesses, and industries. It has two types, namely consumer magazines and business magazines. Consumer magazines are bought by general public for information and entertainment, such as fashion and glamour magazines, film and sports magazines, and health and lifestyle magazines. On the other hand, business magazines include publications such as trade journals for businesses, industries, and occupations. They may be published weekly, monthly, or quarterly and readers are usually businessmen, executives, or business students. Other examples of print media include billboards, flyers, books, and newsletters. Another type of media is broadcast media. Broadcast media is the inclusion of different mediums that are used for communicating, transmitting, and broadcasting to the public or masses. It uses a wide range of audiovisual materials as well as electronic or electromagnetic mediums to share news, information, entertainment, advertisement, etc. with the target audiences or general public. 
television and radio broadcasting are two major examples of broadcast media. Television is a principal source of information and entertainment for people exposed to mass media. It combines visual images, sounds, motion, and color, and is believed to be the most authoritative, influential, and exciting medium for reaching very large audience. From a business standpoint, TV not only remains the most effective medium, almost twice as much as the rest, making advertisers earn more money than any other medium, but it is also the most efficient in terms of retention rate. The debate around whether or not television is good for us has been going on for many years. Some people believe there's nothing wrong with it, while others see it as purely negative. As with any technology, there are different pros and cons of television. Here are some of the advantages of watching television. Since televisions are already in our homes, flicking it on instantly provides us with cheap, easy entertainment, and we don't even need to leave the house. Considering how expensive things like going to the movies are, this lets us save some money while still providing ample entertainment. TV watching can also take the place of family members or friends and fill a lonely void. That's what social surrogacy is all about. The term psychologists use to explain this phenomenon. If you're lonely and bored, TV can be a constant companion. You don't need to use the TV just to binge watch your favorite reality show. You can also use it as a learning tool. Put on a channel like the History Channel or National Geographic and you're not just watching a mind-numbing show, you're learning something too. Families have been gathering around the TV for many years now. It's a great way to get the family together, especially in today's world where everyone is so busy. And now, here are some disadvantages of watching television. This disadvantage has been known for quite some time. Television can make you lazy. Rather than going out with friends and family, you may just want to lounge on the couch and watch some TV instead. Or you may opt to watch TV instead of doing homework, chores, and other things that you usually should be doing. There is an abundance of violence and illicit content on TV. This becomes especially problematic for children. Some researchers believe that when kids see violent acts on TV, they are more likely to reenact the violence in real life. Another disadvantage of TV is exposure to consumerism. Let's face it, TV is filled with commercials boasting the latest cool toys, electronics, clothes, food, etc. It's been found that on average, Kids see about 40,000 ads in a year, with most of them being about food and alcohol. TV hurts your health. Some studies have found a correlation between TV watching and obesity. It's also been found that watching more than three hours of TV a day can contribute to a wide variety of health problems like behavior problems, sleep problems, and even lower grades. Another example of broadcast media is radio. The transmission of radio signals using a radio station to multiple radio receivers over the air is known as radio broadcasting. The radio frequency lies from 3 Hz to 300 gigahertz, And the common modulation schemes used for radio broadcasting are AM and FM. Radio has undergone considerable changes in the past few years. It used to be the premier mass medium for audiences and advertisers because it can deliver ad messages to a very large number of audiences across the length and breadth of a particular geographic area. Here are some of the advantages of radio. Radio is a live media. This is one of the main advantages of radio that sets it apart from all the others. This means that you receive your music, announcement, information, or message in real time. 
there are almost no delays. There are no broadcast restrictions. Namely, when it comes to this medium, events can last as long as necessary. This is made possible primarily by the fact that radio broadcasting is not limited in any sense. It is an affordable media. Every radio station makes its living from commercials and advertising. However, compared to other media such as television, the costs of producing a radio commercial are relatively lower. It is available on every device. To access a radio station, one only needs a device that can play a radio stream. There are many devices that can do this, including smartphones, computers, laptops, gaming consoles, smart TVs, smart speakers like Alexa Echo and Google Chrome. Here are some disadvantages of radio. Lack of continuity. If your attention was attracted by an advertisement in a newspaper or TV, you have the opportunity to save it, cut out a picture, or take a photo. However, it is impossible on the radio. Radio commercials may attract your attention if they are inventive and original, but you will not be interested if they are common. Therefore, you will not even remember them, so the effect of such advertising is weaker. You cannot rewind the program to hear, for example, an important phone number. But on the contrary, you have to wait for the particular ad to be broadcast again. Lack of visual appeal. Whereas television, the other prominent broadcast medium, has multi-sensory appeal, radio can only impact your audience through sounds. You don't have imagery to play with. It takes very talented copywriters to instill theater of the mind with the listening audience. Distraction. Since the radio allows you the ability to do something else while listening to it, the question is how much your attention will be focused on the content of what you hear. Before the advent of the digital age, the most popular forms of media were what we now call analog or traditional media, such as radio, newspapers, magazines, billboards, journals, and the like. Since then, the technological revolution has brought with it many new types of media that now play a major role in disseminating information and entertainment to populations around the world. But what is digital media? What does it encompass? How did it evolve? And where is it headed? Digital media refers to the information shared through a digital device or screen. Essentially, it's any form of media that relies on an electronic device for its creation, distribution, viewing, and storage. Digital or new media encompasses a wide array of websites, tech devices, and platforms. You may be aware of some uses of digital media, but the fact is that digital media influences many industries and has opened a range of avenues for people to make a living and utilize their talents in different ways. Here are some examples of digital or new media. The first one is social media platforms. Social media is a collective term for websites and applications that focus on communication, community-based input, interaction, content sharing, and collaboration. People use social media to stay in touch and interact with friends, family, and various communities. Some popular social media platforms are Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook Messenger, TikTok, and many more. We also have video sharing platforms. These are websites that let people upload and share their video clips with the public or to invited guests. Online video platforms allow users to upload, share videos, or live stream their own videos to the internet. Some popular video sharing platforms are YouTube, TikTok, Dailymotion, Twitch, Vivo, Vimeo, and many more. Another popular example of digital or new media is online gaming. Online gaming has never been so popular. 
According to surveys, more than half of young Filipinos say they visit gaming sites and play online games several times a week. An online game is a video game that is either partially or primarily played through the internet or any other computer network available. Having an optimal online gaming experience typically requires a high-speed internet connection and proper hardware like gaming consoles such as Xbox or Nintendo Switch. Today, plenty of online games function more or less as a social platform for people to interact with their friends. They aren't even necessarily concerned about playing the game. The advent of games like Minecraft and Roblox showed how online games could create entire gaming communities. Other examples of digital or new media are websites and email. Websites are a collection of web pages and related content that are identified by a common domain name and published on at least one web server. Notable examples are wikipedia.org, google.com, and amazon.com. Email or electronic mail, on the other hand, is a system for sending messages to one or more recipients via telecommunications links between computers using dedicated software or a web-based service. Examples are Google Mail or Gmail, Yahoo Mail, Outlook, and many others. A podcast is an electronic series of digital audio files that a user can download to a personal device to listen to at a time of their choosing. A video blog, or video log, on the other hand, is a form of blog for which the medium is video. Vlog entries often combine embedded video, or a video link, with supporting text, images, and other data. Entries can be recorded in one take or cut into multiple parts. Vlog category is popular on the video sharing platform, YouTube. Now that we know the different types of media, let's talk about media convergence. This simply refers to the merging of different types of mass media, such as traditional media, print media, broadcast media, new media, and the internet as well as portable and highly interactive technologies through digital media platforms. The most relevant example of media convergence is a smartphone that blends together various media, such as print media in ebooks, news apps, broadcast media in streaming websites, radio, and music apps, as well as new media like the internet into a single device that performs various functions from calling and texting to photography, videography, gaming, and so much more. Wondering why media convergence is important? It is important because it blends together content, communication technologies, and computer networks, thus leading to immediate transformation of many established industries, services, as well as work practices, and through all this, new forms of content are born. Here are the key points why media convergence is important. It transforms the mode of communication, news reporting, and journalism. For example, media journalism. It leads to cross-media since a huge amount of content is now being accessed through portable devices. For instance, News organizations no longer simply rely on print or AV transmission. Many new media forms are born, like news portals, podcasts, news feeds, blogging, websites, and mobile applications. The newly converged media platforms provide online access to the archives and endless opportunities for users to comment on the story or provide links to relevant material. Media convergence has proven to be beneficial in the digital era, which is filled with content seeking our attention continuously. Here are the most important advantages of media convergence. The instant availability of news and moment-based content is one of the top advantages of media convergence between traditional media and new media. 
The content producers can specifically target the best audience or group they're aiming towards by publishing customized content. With media convergence, the audience has also become the creator themselves. From memes to social media posts, media convergence has truly become beneficial to integrate audience on a global level. With the media convergence between traditional media and new media, the cost of digital marketing has also become economical, thus making this process beneficial and affordable. While the advantages of this form of convergence focus on content integration, faster access, and international reach, disadvantages highlight the impact of convergence on consumers as well as technology. Here are the major disadvantages of media convergence. Difficulty in assessing consumer responses and reactions scattered across diverse converged platforms. More competition for consumers' time and attention with various media platforms in one device. Audience often feel overwhelmed with massive amounts of information overload. Media convergence is prone to cyber attacks and malfunctioning. <laughs>